Now, everyone says saturated fat is bad. And they say red meat is bad. Well, actually, red meat probably is bad. <laughs> but not for the reasons you think. And the reason is on this slide, as an example, there are many studies like this, looking at hazard risk ratios for heart disease based on, oh, this is type two, type 2 diabetes, I apologize, based on consumption of red meat, poultry, and fish. And what you'll notice is that when you control for the iron and the heme, which is model two and model three, the effect goes down. So it might actually be the iron and the heme that's in the red meat rather than the saturated fat in the red meat, because iron and heme are both Oxid, that's oxidative stress, and that does cause disease. So it is possible that red meat is a bad actor, but not because of the saturated fat. Everybody just assumed, because you have to cut the stuff off the T-bone, that that's what the problem was. Not necessarily, it might have been the meat itself. So take a look at this picture. On the top we have Italian beef, in the middle we have Argentinian beef, and in the bottom we have good old USA choice beef. What do you see? Yeah, there's a lot of fat in ours, isn't there? USA corn-fed beef. Because that's what happens when you corn feed animals. Take a look at the Argentinian beef. You know, they eat twice as much beef as we do. We eat 23 kilos a year, they eat 44 kilos a year, and they have a lower risk of heart disease than we do because they eat that beef, because their cows graze in the Mendoza Valley and eat grass. Ours eat corn. So the question is, what is it about eating corn that's a problem? And I will tell you that your muscles look just like that, because you ate that beef. So corn has high levels of branched chain amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, and valine, and when the liver use, utilizes those for energy, it has to take the amino group off, and it then goes straight into the Krebs cycle, ends up promoting liver fat accumulation in the liver, which then gets exported out to the muscle. And this study, done by uh, Chris Newgard over there in the upper left, shows that as the branched chain amino acids go up, so does insulin resistance. That means heart disease and diabetes. And that's the pathway that it takes there in the bottom left. And over here, is yet another potential reason why our red meat is particularly bad, because it has a lot of choline. So choline is an important part of muscle, like acetylcholine. It's a, a part of a neurotransmitter. You have to eat it. It's also part of phosphatidylcholine, which helps you transport lipids. Bacteria in your intestine break choline down to something called trimethylamine, which then gets oxidized to something called trimethylamine oxide, TMAO, which has actually been shown to be the stickiest, most inflammatory substance that we actually have in our bodies. This is work from Stanley Hazen at the Cleveland Clinic. So it is entirely possible that red meat is a bad actor, but not necessarily because of the saturated fat. So we have to be clear about what we're really talking about here. And saturated fat also includes something else. It's called dairy. It turns out that dairy is protective against diabetes and heart disease. The reason is because dairy has different saturated fat than red meat does. Red meat has even chain 16 or 18 carbon saturated fat like palmitate or stearate, whereas um, uh, dairy saturated fat has odd chain C15 or C17. Okay, what you can see down here is palmitoyl oleic acid, which is a good one, and you can see that the risk ratio goes down for all of those because it turns out that dairy saturated fat is protective. But when you put red meat saturated fat and dairy saturated fat together and just call it saturated fat, you're missing the point. So everyone's scared of saturated fat and they're still saying it. 